Mizuno has made some serious advancements in drivers over the past few years. New in 2021 is the STZ and STX drivers. We're going to test them out with TrackMan and tell you how they perform. Hey golfers, Drew and Thomas here at the Second Swing Minnetonka Tour Van. We've got new drivers today to test out the Mizuno STZ and the STX. Uh, so Thomas, Mizuno has made serious improvements with the drivers the past few years, kind of with their Showtime Blitz on drivers, um, really innovating things. They've had like a unique uh, club face material as well we'll talk about, but uh, I know you've been fitting customers into Mizuno drivers. What have you seen from them? And then of course, what do you see from these at first glance? Yeah, you mentioned that blitz, the Showtime Blitz, mm -hmm. going back to ST190, ST200. Mm -hmm. I was expecting ST210, but they got away <laughs> from that a little bit, which yeah. is kind of interesting there too. But yeah, so they perform really well. Mizuno has invested a lot of time, a lot of effort into improving their driver market, and they're catching up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've especially noticed just by looking at them, the, the clean look, both on the sole and on the, the crown, they've really improved on that piece. But of course, the performance is what a lot of golfers are looking for. And so uh, we're going to test them out today. Thomas, you've got the shaft you're going to use as well. Can you explain a little bit about how that's going to perform? Yeah, so this is the Hazardous RDX Smoke. It's a 6.0 golf shaft, so it's stiff golf shaft. It's the stiffest one that we've got right now to test with initially. Uh, so it's going to be a lower spinning, more stable golf shaft. Okay, perfect. Well, we've got the two, we got the two heads at 10 and a half degrees for the STZ and the STX. Thomas is going to test them out and then maybe play around with the nine degree STZ head, maybe move that loft down a little bit, see how much distance you can really achieve here. But uh, we'll get to this test. Thomas, I'm ready to uh, watch you hit some bombs here. Let's do it. Okay, Thomas, you've got both club heads in your hand. Um, I did want to ask you about the looks before even hitting actually. Because uh, that was one thing I commented on and I've noticed from Mizuno for sure is just the, the, the sleek look has really, uh, you know, really improved over the last couple of generations. So what do you see with those? Yeah, I'm comparing the two heads here. It's really interesting to me because the STX, which is considered your more draw bias, more maybe more forgiving for those players mm -hmm. that need to get the thing to turn over, is actually a smaller profile when I'm looking at it. Interesting. So I'm looking from like heel to toe, looks like it's a little bit more compact. And then also club head wise, you know, the STZ is really pushed back. The weight's definitely kind of pushed back there too. So you can definitely tell they're chasing that high MOI, yeah. like all drivers are in 2021, yeah. essentially there too. So for me, high MOI, high forgiveness, if that spin rate stays down, it's just an added bonus. Oh yeah, that's the combination, right? That you're looking for, the high launch, low spin, um, and that forgiveness as well, all packed into one club. So that's what it looks like they're going for with the STZ in particular, STX. You can see that weight on the sole is uh, positioned a little bit more in the heel there, so adding that draw bias. But we're going to test these out here. Uh, what we get, I think, five shots with each club maybe, and then um, we'll, uh, we'll see what you can optimize with the STZ there. Sounds good. That was a little miss hit. There we go. There's that high... Slight high, slight toe shot where that mm -hmm. spin rate kind of stays down on for me. Yeah, I know it actually had a little bit of a different sound there too, uh, I noticed, but clearly the performance worked out for you. So uh, interesting, you know, you're getting, you're very efficient with your strikes. Cause if that's, I mean, you said you missed it, you know, the one, four, five, or excuse me, one, four, nine smash. Yep. And if we're going to bring up these numbers here, um, you'll see, you know, you had one, five, oh, the rest of them. So. Super hot ball speeds there, Thomas. That's the forged SAT 2041 beta titanium club face. Kind of a mouthful, but the idea is 17% stronger and 8% more flexible than your standard kind of traditional titanium club face that you see in the market. And so that's what Mizuno is going for here. And I think, you know, you're to a degree you're seeing it here on these numbers. Yeah, that SAT stands for super alloy titanium. So for those so. people that are kind of wondering what SAT stands for, it's not a test score. Yeah. It's super, super alloyed titanium. Yeah, I think yeah. 2041, I don't know where that would rank on the uh, <laughs> SAT scale. But yeah. uh, interesting here, though. So you had a couple that you left the face open, and that spin, for the most part, did stay down. You had one that kind of trickled up there over 2,500. But the spin, for the most part, was staying down, and you're pretty consistent across the board distance-wise. Yeah, keep in mind 10 and a half degree lofts. So yep. we're testing 10 and a half versus 10 and a half originally here. Because with the STX, there is no nine and a half degree head. Mm -hmm. So I want to do head-to-head -head test, and then we'll 
optimize that uh, S, T, Z, because I'm, I'm very excited to do that. But <laughs> normally more loft, it's going to leak with more, more spin. Who knows, the spin rate is a little bit higher than I'm kind of used to that you've seen on yeah. my other club comparisons. I'm also not swinging out of my shoes right now either. I'm just trying to get a nice test, same club speed between the two right. of them, so we can compare them, them, them. One thing I will touch on with the S, T, Z, it's definitely really not that draw bias. But more designed to kind of fly straight. Yeah. If anything, it's just a little bit harder for me to kind of turn over. The first shot I hit was to the left, but you'll notice I had three that were just a little bit to the right, and I had one just kind of left of center. Yeah. So I'm excited next to, next to test the STX, because I know that one's a little bit more draw, draw bias. Mm -hmm. I would expect also with the lie angle being about three degrees more upright, be much easier to turn over. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's just test that out, huh? All right. Okay, Thomas, you've got the STX, hit the five shots. You did notice the draw bias in that club there. Um, I'll bring up these numbers really quick in the map. You can see how that dispersion kind of, you know, gravitates to the left side a little bit. So did you, and I noticed right away when you put it down, you said this just feels like it's gonna go left. Yeah, it definitely sits like, looks like it sits a little bit more upright mm -hmm. to me. And I think it is three degrees more yeah. upright compared to the STZ. Mm -hmm. so. so interesting yeah. that, you know, I think now with the draw bias, generally the idea is the spin actually does kind of go down if you have a ball, uh, if a right-handed golfer hits it more left, closed club face, spin goes down. So interesting that that did take place here on average, right? Yep. Uh, 200 RPM. Now, again, this is only four, uh, five shots with each club, but uh, interesting to see that right away we see, you know, you had three, uh, you know, 15 plus yards right with the STZ and nothing more than five yards right with the STX. Yeah, the first couple of shots, I was surprised. They just really, really eased it straight. I was struggling a little bit with that right ball with the STZ. Mm -hmm. We have that one exception. So there's that one that's way left with the STZ. If you were going to take that one away, then you would see clearly that, yeah. you know, there's a huge difference in, in dispersion with regards to right to left. And this thing, really easy to turn over, even if I was fighting that right ball. It was only just right of center. It was basically dead straight, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And very efficient. I mean, we can talk about smash factor. One five on average for both. That uh, consistency as well, pretty good. Uh, so now I think for your, what you wanted to do, the fun part here. So we have the nine degree head of the STZ, and with the adjustable hosel, you can actually move it down to was it seven and a quarter, maybe? Yeah, it's like seven point estimated seven point two five. So it's okay. all, it's just a little over two degrees. So what that does, it also opens the club face four degrees. So yeah. we'll have to pay attention to that a little bit. But yeah. hey, you know, I was hitting some very, very smooth swings on these first 10. Mm -hmm. I was not swinging my normal 100% because when I got 10 and a half degrees of loft on it, it would, it would just spin a little bit too much. Yeah. I just wanted to showcase the two heads, comparing them with the exact same club speed. And I was right about 110. Now it's time to unleash. Yeah. Now I want to start hitting some bombs. Now, now Thomas wanna, is chasing distance. Yeah. Now he's gonna he's gonna really uh, do that with seven and a quarter ish degrees on the uh, STZ head. Uh, just make sure you get that club face turned over with the open uh, lie angle, and uh, we'll see what happens. Let's test it. Hey, Thomas, we definitely gained some distance there. Uh, that was that last swing. You really went after that one and it paid off. Uh, so I know one of the things for you is making sure that you really turn that club face over with I mean, the hosel adjusted four degrees open, right? So, yep. but interesting if I uh, bring this, these up here, I collapse that and then I bring up the map. So you can see how the you know, optimizing the STZ driver to, at least for you, Mm -hmm. um, you're able to gain some distance there. And we talk about, you know, the spin stayed in that optimal range, but you're able to gain, what? I mean, 17, 16 yards of carry distance there just by optimizing it to what fits you. Yeah, I mean, that second shot, I left that face open on. That's that one that's kind of over there mm -hmm. to, to, the, to the right side. That was, as I mentioned, four degrees open when you're putting those loft down on, on the, with the sleeve here. Um, but the other four shots, I did get that club face to turn over nicely. You can see there are maybe just left of center and pretty good. So mm -hmm. not, not too bad at all. And keep in mind also, this driver shaft stock with Mizuno is 45 inches in length. I got my swing speed to 116. 
I know I've been chasing distance, and I've been playing around with the idea of 46 inch, maybe it's a little longer golf shaft, if the uh, USGA and yeah. RNA allow it. Um, right. But yeah, so if I have a longer golf shaft, I'm gonna get more swing speed there as well. So this is just showing even with 45 inch driver shaft, super speed training and over speed training has definitely been paying off there mm -hmm. too. Um, because I've been doing that, I need to get that loft down. So I'm generating more speed and I'm hitting up and ball a little bit more. Yes, you are. And that's why I need to get that loft down. Yeah, yeah. So that was, that's the benefits of having the, you know, the adjustable hosel there. Uh, a bunch of different settings to choose from, from the STZ and STX drivers. Uh, I know one of the things that you mentioned too was, you know, you, you might like actually, you think the STX head is maybe a little more compact at a dress. Uh, if a golfer wanted, they could choose the draw bias head and maybe a, use the adjustable hosel to adjust back to somewhat near neutral. So it performs as if it's a more compact head and you know you don't have that um, that draw bias maybe in there if you don't need it. So there are a lot of options here with these these drivers if you know someone is interested in trading in their old driver and upgrading to one of these. Yeah, I'm definitely glad you brought that up because I did personally like the STX head a little bit better. It just seemed like it was a little more compact. While the STZ is a little larger profile. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I could use that 10 and a half degree head, turn that thing down two degrees to, to the lower setting, be around about eight and a half degree driver head, and it would work very, very efficiently by opening that club face about three or four degrees open, which is gonna essentially limit that draw bias that's in the club head already. Yeah. Thomas, uh, you optimized the STZ and you ended up getting you know, nearly 330 yards. Actually, totally, you did hit one 337. So I'd say good work here uh, from Mizuno and pretty good performance here. Yeah, that last shot was awesome. So for golfers, if you're seeing changes in your golf swing or even want to upgrade to the new Mizuno STZ or STX, come on in to second swing, bring your trades in. We do accept trades. It's a great way to help offset the prices on new golf equipment. Bonus also with Mizuno. Mizuno is priced a little bit cheaper than other, their other competitors there too. So I think it's a little a bit, about $100 cheaper mm -hmm. in general. Um, so great option there and more value, but also you getting some great numbers there too. So Absolutely. come on in and get fit. Absolutely. Yeah, Thomas, thank you for hitting the shots today and showing us everything we need to know about the Mizuno STZ and STX drivers.